Although we are active church of Satan members, we do not speak in their behalf. The following contains language and adult men and poorly impersonated celebrity voices. Listener discretion is advised. This is Reverend Campbell, and you're listening to the Devil You Know podcast. Stop listening now and listen to nonsense! <laughs> All right, well, hey, episode three. Here we are, John, back at it again. Yes. It's been really cool so far. I mean, I, I've been having so much fun doing this and just, uh, I don't know, man, just great response. Seems like people are really having fun uh, listening to the show. We got people that are, you know, I know are interested in being on the show. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm having, having fun myself. I mean, you know, every uh, every time we record, I send uh, the women into their rooms, so it's really quiet in the house. I really like it. <laughs> I actually d- disappear into a bedroom just so I don't have to try to explain to the baby, hey, keep it down, kid. So, uh, I just take my beer into the other room. and <laughs> Your beard? Oh, your beard. beer. And okay, my okay. beard. Yeah, great, both, great. actually. Yeah. yeah, bring them both in there. Fuck it. I do. Um, but, yeah, anyway, uh, having a kick-ass time. And, of yeah. course, as always, uh, just thank you all for listening and also for your input, please keep uh, calling in and sending us emails. And yep. uh, you the know, messages are great. I mean, it's really uh, it boosts the confidence, and it uh, you know it really um, means a lot to hear some uh, some great words from people uh, inspiring us to to keep this going. And we have a good uh, question this this month, don't we? Uh, from yeah. a voice Yes, yeah. on the sound off line, someone called, which is uh, if you don't know now, it's six zero two three six eight three one six six, and just leave a rant. Leave a message. Say something. Anything. Um, yeah, yeah. It's really fun to listen to, and uh, you, it might get aired. But this this week, uh, someone called. Uh, his name's James from Canada, Ontario, Canada. He uh, left a pretty interesting message that I think can be a great uh, topic for our dis- our opening discussion here. Let's do it. So let me uh, let me play it now. All right. Hey folks, my name is James. I'm calling from Ontario, Canada. The reason I'm calling today is because I have a wide circle of friends with diverse interests, and I talk to bunches of people in all kinds of different circles with different viewpoints. And one of the things that I frequently come up against when I bring up the topic, oh, I am a Satanist, and no, I don't follow the pedestrian Satanism of Illuminati and pedophilia rings or the devil worship or the inverse Christian varieties out there. I'm a Lebanon Satanist which means that I am atheist, and every time I bring that up and I mention that I am Church of Satan, Anton LaVey, that variety, the only variety that I think of Satanist, the response that I get is, oh, you don't know the first thing. That is shallow, stupid. There's nothing of value there. It's a laugh. Clearly, I feel differently because I'm finding a great meaning in the writing of Anton LaVey, and what could be had from Peter Gilmore, and all the other writings and everything else that can be had. I think it's quite deep, and there's a lot to be had. But I'm curious, have you heard this kind of um, complaint about the Church of Satan and Satanism? How do you respond to it? I'm curious to hear your perspective. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. What did you think of that, Dorian? Well, obviously, I mean, first off, James, thanks for thanks for calling. Oh. Um I think uh, I think you and I, we're not even in the same room, and I think that the first and foremost, and we're just going to put this out there for uh, all listeners, whether you are COS related or not, um, there is a moment where probably I'm sure John and I both cringe, and it's when somebody uses Ooh, let the me term. Guess. <laughs> yeah, well, you ahead. just kind of just said it. it. I know what you're saying now. Levian Satanist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, because um, we we've kind of always pushed forth this um, this fact that uh, Anton LaVey codified Satanism. So anything else, I mean, we, we know that in history there was times where people were referred to as a Satanist, but it was never anything official. There was never anything above ground that was um, official about it. So uh, anything that has come after Anton LaVey, is writing coattails, and therefore it's not Satanism. Really? So, um, so I, you know, I mean, I understand. I do, I do understand what he was saying, and and I do get the point of trying to clarify. But here, you definitely don't have to because 
uh, we're all on board with with this. There's there's one Satanism, and anything else is either devil worship or goths gone wild, or you know, Christian you know, inversionism. Whatever. Yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. Like Anton LaVey said, uh, you know, you're either Satanist or you know, there's either Satanist or nuts. You know. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah you have it. So uh, obviously that was the first thing that struck me, but mm. um, one of the things that I think you and I kind of uh, both agreed on is um, the way that you approach people who you talk to about satanism uh is going to have an effect on how they i guess look at you and and any authority that you have in it or, or receive that message yeah even if not not even uh as and i don't approach. i don't mean authority as in hierarchy i just mean right. authority as in your personality um you know like for example you know like I can say that I've never really had somebody kind of jump on me saying, well, you don't actually understand Satanism, you know, like anytime I've ever <laughs> looked at somebody in the eye and said, I'm a Satanist, um, they can look back at me and go, I, I think this dude knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the way you approach people is going to reflect in uh, how they're going to respond to you. Right. And not only not only the way that you approach people, but the way that you uh, conduct yourself when you're approached. Exactly. Yeah. Very so. true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, there is uh, uh, there's a lot of um, lesser magic lessons that can be an, applied to that, too. I think um, um, your tone of voice and your your knowledge and the the look that you give them, the, the confidence in your own eyes are all going to play into that, you know, uh, just the way that they are, are going to maybe offer you respect as a Satanist. Because that's one thing I don't really, I do explain Satanism quite often, you know. Mm -hmm. There are people that, uh, and in fact, you know, I had a guy uh, just this last week, um, I he brings his daughter in to get piercings all the time at the shop. And um, he always loves bringing her to me. He always gives me lots of compliments about how good I am, how professional I am. And he's, he's brought her in three or four times, and this last time he brought her in, I had my uh, Satanist silver medallion, you know, in plain view. And he made a comment <laughs> about, well, I would never let somebody with a pentagram uh, pierce me. And I said, really? I said, you know, because I'm no different than all the other times that you've come in here and complimented me. And, and he kind of was like, oh, I guess you're right, you know. And it just kind of goes yeah. to show you that, you know, just the way that you – you approach it is is one thing and you you do have to have some confidence you you have to have of course the knowledge and so you do have to study uh and know everything that you um you have to have the answers i guess when it comes to the, the people that are going to question if you're understanding satanism <laughs> yeah you know? and that's important that you, that you brought that up this the word study i mean you think when you know when you go to college and you go to school your your university and you're becoming something and you're gaining all this knowledge and you're applying this knowledge and you're the one that's paying for this knowledge so to speak it's really tough when someone else tries to get that information from you for free you know yeah. they haven't done the legwork they haven't done their due diligence and things like that so when they approach you and and, uh, and 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 say these things to you in a, in a disparaging manner, and um, you know, like you don't know what you're talking about, and uh, you you know, trying to belittle you or besmirch you. Um, it's it's important how you how you react to that and, and things like that because you're the one that's done the legwork. Because what what brings this to mind, what I'm trying to get that is Anton Lavey said uh, once. He said, "Never smarten up a rube." Right, right. So yeah, if the yeah. person is just. Um, not earnest in their uh, inquiries uh, about Satanism to you, and they're just looking to uh, downgrade your your belief or your or, uh, philosophy or your lifestyle in in, in regard to Satanism. Um, let them think what they want. Yeah, uh, especially with pseudos, um, they are, may just be looking for an argument, um, yeah. and and that isn't going to do you any good. You know, you really have to decide um, at what point is it really worth your time. Um, if at the end of your conversation, if you know that there's still going to be um, what they are, maybe it's best to just let them think what they want and just leave it be because you're only wasting your breath. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, so I mean, those are, I, th I guess, the main things that uh, that you know, for James to kind of keep in mind. Number one is um, 
who are these people that you're around and do you really want to be around them <laughs> would be <laughs> would be the first thing yeah. uh, and then if they are then you know maybe um sometimes a subject is not worth bringing up and and that's kind of something we've talked about in the past too but uh yeah. Um, you know, knowing when to tuck away the Baphomet, you know, sometimes we've always, we always think of that as being something that you apply to maybe more like Christian kind of people, but maybe sometimes you see a pseudo Satanist and go, you know what? Um, I know that they're full of shit and I don't want them even talking to me about it. So, you know, if, if you know that it's, it's not going to ever change their mind anyway, um, why bother? Let it, just let it go and, and avoid the conversation. Yeah. And other than that, if you want to have the conversation, uh, know your facts. Study. Study. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, if like I said before, if they're asking earnestly and, or, and you know they just don't know and they really do want to know, and, and you know whether they do want to know or not, um, yeah. it's always good to clear up misconceptions. And, Absolutely, yeah. And uh, you know, just set the record straight on a lot of things, um, providing that you have gained that knowledge. So you know yeah always do that always do that yeah absolutely and and again that's kind of the point of our podcast and uh the point of other podcasts like nine cents you know like the the whole idea behind the greater uh, satanic conversation is to make sure that we clear up misconceptions yeah. but only when it's warranted and not when somebody's trying to lure you into an argument yeah you know? and think about think about um what do you gain out of that conversation? Exactly. You know, yeah. leave there with something. Don't don't leave there uh, with nothing or or uh, leaving a little or bit of frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. Uh, if that conversation is going to be beneficial to you, go for it. And yeah. If not, uh, our suggestion, I guess, is to uh, just not just just walk away. Let or bulk, bulk up could be the other thing too. If <laughs> if they, if bulk up, if you look like you could kick the shit out of them, they probably won't <laughs> challenge you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's why people don't really give us that shit. It's because uh, we're overweight guys with tattoos <laughs> <laughs> and beards. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. No, I don't know. A lot of a lot of things come into play with that. But on a serious note, um, it's all up to you, James. It's what you. Um, want to accomplish you know yeah. from from that absolutely so just uh, let us know how if that uh helped you out a little bit and um yeah definitely let us know and yeah absolutely we uh we definitely love to hear the message and of course any messages and by the way if you haven't been paying attention make sure you listen to the show all the way through uh the outro music because we're playing some of our uh, uh you know fun earphone messages also at the end of the show <laughs> yeah. and some stuff in the middle and you never know so <laughs> And there's some things that we're not playing because they're just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah, some people try too hard, but yeah, you yeah. know. Maybe I'll have, maybe we'll have a show where we just do the do some kind of phone message thing, and yeah, you probably you know, should like save every single message, and you I know, do. Just one do. day we'll just say, you know, <laughs> let's just listen back to some of the stupid shit we've had. <laughs> there, yeah, there's some ones that just are not making it on the air, but um, <laughs> yeah. All right. But James, thanks for calling. All right. Oh yeah. All right, let's move on. So, Dorian, uh, over the past uh, two weeks since uh, we had him on, we've got nothing but like good things out of uh, the Christopher Walken thing, right? Yeah, he was really great, and yeah, people were really loving it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, he's been doing some study. And I think we should call and kind of see, you know, like I don't know where how how he's coming along with his studies and see if he's getting a. Yeah. Yet, so. yeah, he left the uh, open invitation to call. So let's uh, let's do that right now. All right. Cut. That was a great scene. I have to take this phone call. It's important. Christopher. Hello. Chris, yes. can you hear us? Chris, hello, gentlemen. How are you? Are you busy? Is this a good time or what? It's always a great time when you call. <laughs> so, like, That's were you in the middle of anything? We didn't want to, you know. No, no. I call the scenes the way I feel. I'm Chris. Oh, you're I'm on just... set now? Yeah, I'm taking a break. You will cut. The scene's over. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Did you need us to call you back or, or, or what? No, it's, it's fine. I'm wrapped up for the day. I'm heading back to my trailer. Oh, great, great. Perfect timing, then. 
All right. Uh, then I'm going to eat some pineapple. It's great. It's, I love the taste. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Uh, how have you been? Has uh, studies been going okay for you? Studies have been have been good. I've been doing scenes and reading up on my favorite book. Okay. Uh, Satanic Bible? That's correct. Great, okay. great. So, uh, it's amazing the things that I find and I learn in the book. Yeah, tell us about I, it. I can't put it down. It's a good time that you guys are calling me because winter is coming. A winter's coming. Um, yeah, it okay. is. I mean, after Halloween and fall. Yeah, yeah. Now we have to help Jon Snow with the White Walkers. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Red Snow. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you uh, you reading Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones isn't that the same thing as what we're talking about? No, no, we're we're talking about the book we were, we were talking about a couple weeks ago, the Satanic Bible by Anton That's LaVey. Correct. Yes, uh, we have to battle Tyrion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's not. Yeah, he is kind of a bastard, but uh, that, yeah, that's uh, he shot his dad with a bow and arrow. The can, it's terrible. <laughs> There he is, doing his business. Little bastard shoots him. <laughs> yeah, that would that would suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time in the can. I like to read there. It's good. It's quiet. You don't have any bastard children, do you? No. Oh. Uh, in the courts. I have no kids. <laughs> so, how many books do you have in the bathroom? more of a library than uh, yeah so uh, how far along have you actually come in the satanic bible like what's what parts are you up to the parts that intrigue me are the less of magic it's important to have people afraid of you and interested in you at the same time <laughs> yow <It's amazing. laughs> yeah. as being yeah. Chris people are already afraid and intrigue. It's easy. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Why do you feel they need to be afraid of you, though? I don't know. I'm a powerful man. Yeah. Lots of connections. Intense. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I guess, do you have any uh, any questions about what you've read so far? The questions that I have are about the girl with the dragons. Is she coming or not? <laughs> <laughs> I too would like to ride a dragon. It sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. If, as soon as you get your wand, you could probably do that. <laughs> no, you told me that was wrong. Last yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of hey, course. Good, he's paying attention. Awesome. I do. Yeah. Smart man. <laughs> um. Dragons. Yeah, there's not really uh, any dragon riding in the uh, Satanic Bible either, Chris. That's Think- unfortunate. I've been taking horse riding lessons, I assume the same. Whoa, <laughs> dragon. Uh, the sa- well, the yeah. saddle's a little larger for the dragon, though. Indeed. I need a large saddle to accompany me. I'm a large man, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> Yeah, we're kind of afraid that maybe you're mixing up a book called Game of Thrones. A series of books, actually. There's a series of books? <laughs> Damn it. I thought there was just one. I've been reading. The uh, I'm trying to find my notes here. I, have, I take lots of notes. It helps when you study things to have notes. Right. Yeah, definitely, including the uh, title of the book you're reading. Uh, I just I just picked up a copy of um, The Satanic Witch. It's about girls. It's weird. <laughs> what do you think yeah. of it so far? Yeah, I like the book that it's pink. It's wonderful. Oh, you got the pink one. All right. Yeah, I and think if it's going to be about women, it should be pink. Well, and there's and there's there's, uh, there's plenty of things for uh, for men to learn from it, of course. Yeah, give me. A second here. My pineapples arrived. I'll be right back. 
uh, oh. John, what the fuck are we going to do with this guy? <laughs> I don't know. He it's... read Game of Thrones instead of the Satanic Bible. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how much hold, uh, hand-holding we could do, but um, I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Where are you at, Chris? Eating pineapple. <laughs> I'll be there in a second. Okay. <laughs> uh, pineapple's good. Okay. The trick to eating pineapple, as I found, is to take off the rough parts first. <laughs> yeah. Did you find that out the hard way? Yeah, it was painful, especially <laughs> coming out. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Talk about the time in the bathroom to study. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the watch was painful. That was a whole other level of pain. Oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you know, we wanted to check in with you um, and just see how far along you've, you've come in your studies of, of uh, the satanic things. Um, we're glad you're reading other books and... and, and and things like that in your leisure, but have you, how far have you gotten, uh, you know, have you gotten in the uh, satanic Bible? I have completed the entire book. Really? Cover to cover. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So Chris, um, let me ask you a question then, since you read it cover to cover, as you uh, put it. Um, By the way. Okay. And the, uh, what did you think of the chapter entitled The God You Save May Be Yourself? Can you ex- kind of uh, expound on that a little bit? Yeah. Going through my notes here, it's, it's important. The God you save is yourself because you're your own God. You know, as, as Chris, I'm God of my world. <laughs> I make things happen all the time. That's what I do. Right. You no, know, man exists on eternalizing his true self, the form of a God. So the God you save is you. You're saving yourself and the power that you have. It's amazing. Right. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> You're not reading it right now, are you? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Not at all. Just sounded that would be all cheating. too familiar. <laughs> Chris doesn't cheat. <laughs> no, we would, we would never accuse subjects. you of cheating, of course. Just, uh, just cheating. curious. No, it's well, Chris. Not I've got a question. Um, some people have been writing to us uh, saying that they love hearing from you and things like that, and, and wondering how you're doing. Uh, they're wondering if they might be able to ask you some questions that you might want to uh, or are able to answer. Would that be cool? So they want to walk with the walking. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. They've got the moves, but I'll do it. <laughs> great, great. I'll let I'll let everybody know. So that's so what we gotta do then, folks. You gotta you gotta have the moves. And if you want a question, what should we do? Should we uh, should we have them email it or they can they can voice they mail can con- use our contact form on the site. They can call in and leave a message on the phone um, for Christopher Walken. Anything like that? Yeah, if I'll you go, want to talk to them, yeah, I'll go toe to toe with anyone. <laughs> I'll take the Peps challenge. Anyone that wants to walk with me. <laughs> the Pepsi challenge. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was in a movie I was in called Pulp Fiction. Have you seen it? Yes. Multiple times. Yeah. It's good. So you're going to be up for the challenge then. If somebody uh, has some questions, they're going to try and stump you. You're going to be ready for that? That's fine. I'll take the challenge with them. They can try to stump Chris. I'm ready. I have my wand. Am I out? Oh boy! I'm ready for this? <laughs> yeah, you know, a few people have already asked John uh, when their uh, owl is going to be in from I Satanist. So <laughs> you guys got to stop before people re- actually start believing that shit. <laughs> Owls and wands and shit. Man, <laughs> oh. I was at the store the other day and I bought some carrots. They were stacked high, carrots everywhere, in bushels and bags. It was, it was carrot town. <laughs> Reminds me of the comic I hate, Carrot Top. It's oh, weird. Yeah. Oh yeah. Buff drag queen. <laughs> yeah, he's got the eyeliner thing going on now. That's permanent. It's really? tattooed on his face, yes. Oh boy. He's a freak. <laughs> he's a freak. 
<laughs> he scares me. He finds me. Worse than marsupials. <laughs> <That's> large man. <laughs> so, oh, shit. It's crazy. The way he moves and talks is scary. Maybe he has a pouch. He might with those muscles. He's probably got something in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, cool. So looks like Arnold ate Reba McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oh fuck! Because <laughs> because I can picture that. That's funny. Because <laughs> that's what he looks like. He's he's weird. <laughs> uh, I've been in entertainment a long time. I've seen him come and go, and that guy's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get on, on Carrot Top? I don't even know. The one question I have is, is are we with the White Walkers? No. Do we have to keep the wall safe? The Ravens. <laughs> oh. uh, wrong. I say in this, having a special on Dragon Glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, my fuck. Be prepared because winter is coming. <laughs> All right, Chris, we're going to uh, let you get back to your pineapple and uh, whatever you're filming right now. And we will uh, we'll talk to you again soon. I will always take time out for you fine gentlemen. You've got the moves. Uh, thank, I'll you. Admit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Always walk with walking. My what? <laughs> and we'll get those uh, messages to you as soon as possible here. Nice. <laughs> All right, folks, you heard him. So get them challenges into uh, Christopher Walken. And, and you can walk with the Walken. Nice. I want to take a challenge with Mr. Campbell. He's, he's been running his mouth about me. Oh, yeah? How so? I heard that he's not a fan of Chris. Oh, shit. Well, you can't please everybody. Yes, yeah, so you can please me because I'm Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> please. You have a, you have a, we're going to be talking to Adam in, uh, in a little while. Um, do you have anything to say to him or what? Maybe you got a challenge for uh, Adam. Hey, Mr. Nine Cents, are you ready for the chat with Chris? Nine Cents, back at you. I have 10 cents. How you like that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've got the moves. What do you got? <laughs> Uh, I really can't wait for his answer. (laughs) And at the same time, I'm afraid to hear it. I'm Vera. I heard you like redheads. (laughs) How does my vagina feel? Oh, my God. It's really (laughs) tight. and It's really tight. Is it moist enough for you? (laughs) Not really, but I'll spit on it. Oh. <laughs> it's nature's lubricant. What are you waiting for, Dorian? You dick to grow a toenail? Good to go? Are we good to go? <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. Our producer to say, all right, we're good to go. Uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, hold on. I just got word from the producer. They said, what the fuck are you waiting for? <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. All right, John, so it's our third episode, and uh, we need somebody to help us carry on the greater satanic conversation. Who we got this week? Well, I'm glad you said that, because who better, who better, Dorian, than Reverend Adam Campbell? Yeah! (laughs) What's up, man? (laughs) How you doing, gents? (laughs) How's it going? Thank you so much for having me on. This is awesome. Well, you know, you were actually supposed to be our our very first guest and kind of inspired this whole idea of having the uh, these kind of conversations. But then you went and did like a freaking hour long interview <laughs> with Dave Harris. It seems. And we're like, shit, we better let this calm down a little bit. But he knows what he's doing, so we, we figured we'd, we let him do the the better one, and we just goof around here with you and talk about uh, <laughs> we'll pick up the cutting room floor. <laughs> yeah, <crafts>. definitely <laughs> for your show. Yeah. 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 No, it, 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 I, I thought your first episode was phenomenal. Adam Cardone is the fucking man, so I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. It was great. He, uh, yeah, that interview was amazing. 
I could listen to him forever. You know, he's just a, you know he's really uh, welcoming with his with his voice and just everything he talks hey, about's interesting. You know. Yeah, he pretty much just kind of took off with it anyway, so it was it was pretty easy to <laughs> just follow along with it. Yeah. Well, so I would try to follow in that spirit. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, you know, I think uh, I think it should be a fun show because you know we're kind of used to um, talking to you on you know from our different interviews and shows and stuff that we've done on your side of the things. So, uh, yeah. and uh, I think uh, I think the good thing about this group is I think I think we can call you friend. I think we know you well enough. I know like uh, you seem to kind of like the kind of guy that uh, I've talked to enough that you know I could call you fag and you wouldn't take it personally you would probably sling something back at me and we would all laugh at it and know that we're all good right, shut your dick holster i don't appreciate the term fag <laughs> all right <laughs> exactly <laughs> nice <laughs> so uh i guess uh let's just kind of we're just gonna let this one kind of free form a little bit more and have a little more fun rather than just the the typical but I, you know i still want to know some stuff obviously uh you've been busy with Nine cents, of course, and with oh, yeah. Satanists on uh, Satanic Film, uh, Wart Cin- Nation Cinema. Yes. Yeah. Tell um, us about your mother. <laughs> <laughs> you got a zillion projects. What's going on? Uh, yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's something that uh, those of us who it seems self-identify as Satanists can never have enough to do, and so we just have to keep piling things on. That's true. Um, and and honestly, I'm I have so many more projects that I've never really fully realized that I really want to because these other things are taking all my time. You know, like raising kids. I got two of those, and Kitten they've been juggling. taking the back seat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And for well, okay, I know you said that jokingly, but in when I was stationed in uh, Kentucky at Fort Knox, I was the regional champion kitten juggler. <laughs> I kept it going for 25 minutes. Nary a kitten was dropped. Wow, really? That's awesome. impressive. Well, I, I'm, I don't want to brag. <laughs> Did you occasionally mix in a chainsaw or something to just keep it no, interesting? No, no, no. I, I like to stick it with pussy. <laughs> just stick with pussy and you, you're good to go. That's just how I go. How I roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame you for that. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, you know, as far as, uh, you know, obviously all the things that we know you from, um, you're you're pretty busy with a lot of things. Do you have things that we maybe don't know about besides the podcast and besides the, well, let's just say maybe outside of the digital realm? Um, well, okay, so I'm, I'm by trade a graphic designer. Uh, I'm an artist at heart. So... You know, outside of the digital realm is difficult for me because my life revolves around it starts with a pencil and a sketch and it ends up digitally, no matter what it is, whether it's the podcast or whether it's uh, a billboard or a, a package in a Target or, you know, just whatever it is I do, it all starts physical and it ends up digital. So I can't, there's literally no part of, if, if it weren't for uh, the internet and digital technology, and computers really and at the base. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, w- I would be homeless. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do because everything I do ends up digitally. So that's a tough thing to answer. I will tell you this. Uh, last night I gave my wife two orgasms, which was not my best, but not bad. I mean, two. Yeah, that's 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 all right. I guess <laughs> not that's bad. Not, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I guess maybe it depends on the quality of the orgasm and over the <laughs> quantity. I wish girls understood. Hold on, let me let me let me do this really quick. Uh, the and and let you guys let me know if this is the same with you. I find my if we are lucky enough as men to have two orgasms in a span of let's say an hour. And it, let's let's put that boundary out there. If you can have more than one orgasm in an hour, they are, by succession, worse or, or less impressive. It, yeah, with yeah. women, I think it's the same. I think they're just like, oh, get that down. Oh, yeah. right? With <laughs> I, us, think, I think for the second one, I'll just uh, shit myself. It, it, takes, it takes a little more work. So maybe we're kind of putting more, kind of, like the first one, of course, is like, boom, yeah, that was awesome. And then the second one's like, yeah, you're coming, you're, you're getting there, you're getting there. So, I mean, yeah, it's going to it's gonna take a little bit more work. So maybe we're just kind of, Losing some of the. Do you actually say that during sex? You're getting there. You're getting there. 
don't no, you? Okay, Wait a minute. <laughs> Look, go to the left. You're going to do it right, right? <laughs> That's my leg, damn it. <clears throat> oh, ours is like, it sounds like two sailors. It's crazy. It's fucking nuts in there. <laughs> you got your nuts in there? Fuck no, the we're port! Sl- we're slinging around know. the F word. It's crazy. You fuck, you know, and all this shit. <laughs> Spitting. It gets nuts, dude. Spitting. Hey. It's like aggressive. Like, she just looks at your cock like, oh, I hate you! No, it's it starts off all Biting sensual. Her. It starts off all nice and you know, and <laughs> and then fucking later on, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you fuck, you know, it's fucking nuts. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, you know, hey, oh, that's scary. All right, pass- <laughs> hey, it, twenty years now, I must be doing something project. okay. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> nice. <laughs> What was the question again? Oh. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> he said, have no, you ever okay, met uh, any internet homeless people? Isn't that what you said? Juggling kittens and then we went to yeah, yeah, digital. Was, and I don't know. Oh, yeah, I was talking, I guess, talking about things you do outside. Now, I know you're uh, you're an artist as well, and you have uh, work that's going to be in the devil's reign. Are you going to make it to the to the exhibit? No, no, unfortunately not. I, I just bought a new car for my wife, and so I'm... I'm strapped for the time being. Oh, I Plus see. So, the, so you, got two, you got two orgasms in an hour, so she got a new car. It's weird how that works out. <laughs> it, it's like it, it doesn't ever go the other <laughs> It is messed up. I'm not saying it's fair or that I like it, though I I, am, I, I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to burn calories somehow. It's that or juggling kittens, so. <laughs> What were we? We were talking about what, what were we going off about uh, pre-show? We, before we got on no. the air, we were. Weren't we talking about pre-show? Um, I thought no, we were, we were talking that. about gender identity. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's right. So you want to get banned really quick by every potential listener? Let's talk about gender identity. Uh, well, you know, I think that I think uh, one of the things that we have to be able to. Well, okay, here's a good point. Um, I, I know from listening to your show and I, I'm pretty sure that John and I are both good at this too, is, is we're both good at, at saying some, we're all three good at saying something that, um, maybe we don't mean so harshly, but people take offense to it and jump right off on us and think that we're total assholes. And maybe no, we are assholes, really? but, <laughs> but you know, they just, it's, it's just something that's just taken wrong. Something that's taken to an extreme and, uh, so, you know, yeah, it's going to happen on this show, whether it's this episode, whether it's another, it's going to happen where somebody's going to say something that we didn't mean to be that big of a deal. I thought it was going to be the first episode when I said women need to be more responsible when they go out to a bar. And <laughs> Yeah, you guys are talking about women, like, <laughs> I deserving didn't, yeah. getting raped. That was yeah, pretty which, fucked which up. I didn't, of course, say, but yeah, I mean. That's you know, that was my first fear. It was like, yeah, somebody's gonna take it that way, but you know what? People aren't gonna no, listen. You guys did not gonna fucking you did a good listen. job with that because that that conversation, I think, is especially because both of you have daughters. I have a daughter. I I understand that it is it's a challenging conversation to have, but you guys did a really good job covering your bases on how how uh, a parent should you know talk about that with their kids and you know right. expectations and all. Oh, in, here's this is something that. I think as parents, it's imperative to do. You And I, I'm constantly skirting the language of lesser magic with my kids because they're not exposed to my world fully yet. Right. Um, and so I, you know, I'm using applied psychology rather than uh, lesser magic. But they, you have to teach them these things. We can't go through life expecting everyone to meet us on our own ground. No one is going to meet you on their own ground. Exactly. As human beings, especially as Satanists, we have to recognize this, but as human <laughs> beings, we have to understand that everyone is at the center of their own lifetime movie. And I say lifetime because it's always like that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is at the center of their own lifetime movie, <laughs> and they think it's fucking HBO, but, oh, let me, let me, let me break some news to you. <laughs> it ain't HBO. Yeah. It's fucking lifetime. At best. And most people, fucking USA. All right? I'm just saying. <laughs> Is it USA, the network? There is a USA network. Okay, they yeah. You know, I think you know, I'd rather watch USA network. than Lifetime, though. <laughs> really? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you have a penis. But let's just say you don't <laughs> identify as a man. You may want to watch Lifetime. <laughs> and that's a whole other thing. Now, uh, speaking of, you know, okay, we all have uh, daughters, and I have one who 
at 15 is rather passionate um and she she's kind of gotten although she, she says you know that she's straight and everything but now she's getting on supporting people of different um sexualities or apparently genders because i didn't realize that there's like i don't know 50 some fucking genders now i thought there was two but apparently i'm wrong and now is when i'm gonna start pissing people off but i I mean gender fluid isn't that like when you get something on you after sex (laughs) i thought gender fluid was but apparently not i guess i'm wrong what is it i don't know dude i don't i don't get this shit there's a whole bunch of different new genders and it's like i think one's like if you are if you have male organs but you identify as a female or if you're yeah, getting listen, surgery or I, I don't know all about all that shit i really don't i mean i know people that are trans and all that other stuff like that and it's all cool everything's cool but there are only three fucking genders man there's only three that's it yep. male female and both yeah her math her daddy yeah that's it i mean seriously what you do with that male body or that female body or that hermaphrodite body is your business and we can and that's we'll call you whatever you want us to call you but it still no, but see that's to, where i have the problem i probably won't call you whatever if it's if it's getting to if there's if there's 50 genders to pick from and i gotta call you the right one fuck you you're either a male or female or both or hey you know what i know this we tried this in the late 30s and it didn't work so well but maybe we just have armbands that way we know, and we just won't defend anyone. Or maybe the act of wearing armbands is offensive. I don't know yet. Yeah, nah. As soon as you start having or mixing the idea of sexuality, which is as confusing as it can possibly be, and the uh, idea of gender, which now is as – and maybe always has been – as confusing as it possibly can be, you start mixing those and – it's like a fucking Rubik's Cube. No one will ever figure it out. You need a fucking manual. Yeah, exactly. Like, just show some... And here's the other thing. E- collectively, everyone on this planet is not here to appease you. And whether that you is a man wanting to be identified as a masculine man or a man wanting to be identifying <laughs> as a female, a feminist uh, woman, whatever it is, we are not here to please you. Yeah. If you want to be identified in a specific way, it is incumbent upon you to either bite the fucking bullet and just deal with how people express themselves to you or fucking work them through it. But just to get offended by every little fucking comment and every little I, I say exactly. every little, I mean every because there's so goddamn many social networks that you could possibly be connected <laughs> right. to with so many different types of people that use them and so many different types of fucking ideas that people are gonna have on those different types. It's like a fucking infinity cube. It's just every, <laughs> so many possibilities and no one cares but you. So calm the <laughs> fuck down. <laughs> Oh, it's just, me. you're ex- exactly good. right, and that's. I mean, that's why uh, I really feel like I understand. Like with new, with the next generation, they they have you know different ideas, and that's progression. But the one to have to uh, have, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> but to have like these new words and new definitions that they're not necessary. They're just kind of trying to find some new way of saying. But I'm special. I'm different, and and you're really not. You know, there's no such thing as, as someone who's really special because of um, their sexual preference. I mean, there's somebody else that has the same thing. They feel a certain way or they look a certain way or they want to be seen as a certain way. This is historically, you know, mankind has been out of the fucking caves for, I don't know, 11,000 years. years or so. There has always been this type of behavior. And just because we live in a time when it seems to be odd because of our Victorian ethics that rule our uh, collective society yes, of doesn't mean you're fucking special. And, and I think that's a really good point. And this drives me fucking crazy. And I don't mean to shout over you on your own shit. No. Um, you, you, you let it out. Person. You I'm, let it I'm out. I'm going to double down. <laughs> you are not fucking special, okay? You feel a certain way. That's great. So do I. So does every other person on the planet. But none of us have to understand it or accept it or like it. That is fucking solipsistic at the base of your fucking being. If you accept it, you treat you the way you want to be treated. Can I get an amen? Amen! <laughs> Not even fucking Jesus! <laughs> You're like, Jesus fucking like you for that shit. Actually, he may. He, he actually probably would. He, he liked the whores, right? He was gender fluid. 
Yeah, he was. He, I don't he know hung what out that with means, 12 dudes. I still don't know what it means, but it is a term. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it's frustrating because there's so much stigma attached to anyone who doesn't do the double Dutch dance. Whenever someone wants to self-identify in a new, different, uh, whatever culturally relevant term, like it does, it, it's on you. It is all on you. Right, right. And all the offense, all the PC bullshit, it all ends at your feet, not at mine, not anyone else's for misunderstanding or misrepresenting or not, uh, not getting what the fuck you're talking about. And no one cares. <laughs> I, I just yeah. read, like, er, um, earlier today, I read a story about, uh, like, all these businesses, all these places that are building their bathrooms or redoing their bathrooms to oh, accommodate yeah. for all of this. Now they're making them, like, you know, co-ed. Like, man, you know, man or woman can go in there. And already yeah. people are like, you know, you got like, you know, heterosexual guys that are uh, taking pictures of women and, and you know, doing all the sh- stupid shit. And it's just causing a bunch of stupid shit. Yeah. Well, and that's that's one of those tricky areas and why this is getting out of hand as far as complication is that, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, I think it'd probably be just easier if they just made single stall bathrooms for everybody and then you don't have that issue anymore. Cause, because, I mean, you know, if you just say we're just sticking, we're going to keep it simple and stick with just female and male, well, then, you know, then there's some some dude that's going to take advantage of it and say he's female. But then there's going to be somebody who is going through that change who wants to use their <laughs> – fuck, dude. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, like, think think about this. Because- for a really long time, the, the, there's only been male and female bathrooms, and we've never had a fucking problem. Now all of a sudden – there's yeah. this fucking huge problem. It's I like guys look at my penis. You know what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, that's why I use the stuff. I've, I've caught dudes that creeps looking me out. out. Well, we heard you piss at the beginning of the show, so we kind of got an idea of the <laughs> size and. Hey, that was an ode to Cardone. All right, I just want to say. Yeah, well, <laughs> I thought you had fucking kidney stones or something. I, I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, there's like some, you piss in intervals. Kind of it's funny. There. <laughs> I, no, that's called skill, all right? I did that on purpose. Oh, you were pinching it off and then starting again? Yeah. yeah oh. Yeah. It's style, that's man. Funny. Everything you got to do. It's all about aesthetics with a Satanist, right? Well, actually, I took the Part sound of my waves. aesthetic is starting and stuff. I'll tell you what. makes someone super uncomfortable. If you're peeing next to them in a public bathroom or anywhere in public, you just happen to be peeing next to someone, that makes them uncomfortable. Stay but in, in a public bathroom, if you just start and stop at weird intervals... They will like be so weirded out that you know, looking like you know, you do like the the peripheral look, and then you do like the the sort of like tilt the head a little bit so you get a better peripheral, and then you, it freaks them out. You should do this sometime. I actually, when I go, I usually yell out, "Man, this water's cold and deep," which is total horseshit. But anyway, I took the sound waves of your piss. Right, I, I'm weird like this. I took the sound waves of it and I put it in, put it into this program. And it changes the sound waves into bits of data and, and actually changes them into letters. You know, I know you know you, what you did, Adam. It was amazing. You spelt out the, the word Satan with your piss. That was amazing. How the fuck did you do First that? First of all, I was in the military and I learned Morse code. So it is <laughs> what it is. Same. Nice. <laughs> Talent, man. Talent. It's, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> that, that, that explains the two orgasm thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is gonna be the most- you know what I can do with urine. Imagine what I can do with other things. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, facial. <laughs> what can you do with gender fluid? <laughs> Adam, swallow it. Swallow it. Like a girl. I was good girl. Oh good girl. I was a white Russian when you said that. <laughs> Sounds like a black has Russian. A weird color. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. This is an uncomfortable about? episode for some people. This is the hey, weird. We we're every, let it all hang out. Everyone by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now it's just the three of us talking. <laughs> Nobody's, <laughs> listening. <laughs> Nobody's listening. We haven't talked no, about the Chinese the like, yet. I, right. I, I, I know you guys. Are, I, I'm going to project here. I I believe that you guys feel the same way. We harbor no ill will toward anyone. Right. If you want to identify in a certain way, that's your right. I don't care. Like, be you. Do your thing. The organization, the Church of Satan, the religion, Satanism, has no problem with it. Fly your flag and be cool. Burn your bra. The problem is yeah. when you expect everyone else to fully understand or behave in a certain way. Absolutely. That is not cool. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I mean, obviously, that's that's kind of the way of the it's, world right now, kind especially of social satanic? media. It just changes constantly. What people are are bitching about uh, around the globe every day. It just well, drives it, me crazy. Here's the I thing see too: it in, like, in areas where we live online, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got a question. Yeah, yeah. if like you hear these things and you know from people that that self, uh, you know, they they think that they're satanists or they say that they're satanists. And they're the ones doing all this bitching or demanding of, you know, you should feel this way. You should be this way. Isn't that a little unsatanic? Yeah. You're projecting behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's a sin. Yeah. You know, if you don't really go into it. Well, here's, <clears throat> you know, this sort of bottom line and how I interpret Satanism is that, you know, the sins were created sort of tongue in cheek because people expected sins to exist in every religion, and so uh, yeah. Anton LaVey, you know, felt, okay, well, I, I need to create some sins. He made logical sins based around the philosophy, but it's not like you're going to have to do uh, 55 Hail Satans in the corner, <laughs> with, you know, with an upside-down cross in order to fucking be absolved. It's, we learn from our mistakes as Satanists, and we we move on. Everyone falls into solipsistic patterns. It's yeah. not. It's human nature to do yeah. so. It's what we do after we recognize it, and it's the act of recognizing that we fell into those patterns that's important. So you can objectively listen to this discussion we're having and say these are you know a bunch of macho assholes making fun of things that people find sensitive, or you can realize that we're just individuals trying to. Uh, respect what we can, but not fully fucking getting it. Yeah, exactly. Word. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, I actually, uh, in in what you were talking about, um, I have something a little bit of a, a rant that I guess maybe I wouldn't mind getting your guys' opinion on. Since we're not really going to do guys's. the uh, the regular, your guys' yeah, you, uh, your opinions. Um, <laughs> something that bugged me a little bit um, because you know I guess uh, as a Satanist I, I figure that you know one of the most important things is responsibility and also uh, recognizing a third side perspective you know uh, there was a something that got passed around you guys might have seen it I saw it on um, uh, Facebook yesterday it was a news article and I saw a lot of yeah, Satanists so this is gonna be like a week and a half ago as we're listening to this so this is gonna be yeah crazy. that's all right um, it'll be close to actually the actual <laughs> Halloween time so but some some guy he put up a uh, Halloween decorations outside and it was an upside down cross I don't care about that but it was a guy that's nailed to this upside down cross and it looks like a real it's a really well crafted um, mannequin yeah, uh, and this great. guy's he's like bleeding and it's gory and stuff and it's outside of his front yard and it's right down the street from an elementary school where kids, you know, pass by this thing. And it's it's very graphic and realistic looking. So, um, of course, uh, some religious groups got upset because it was an upside down cross. And, of course, it's, you know, by the close to the school. <laughs> and I couldn't help but see a bunch of Satanists saying, um, oh, that's bullshit. You know, you should be responsible and teach your kids about death. And it's part of life and all this stuff. And I... Uh, had a third side, I guess, um, as far as when it comes to responsibility and as far as having kids myself, is that, hey, you know what? This is a really well-crafted piece of art. It should be inside a haunted house that has a warning that says, this is for adults. If you don't like it, don't come in here. I don't agree that it should be in somebody's front yard in view of elementary kids. I mean, it's one thing to to share... Your, you know, the truth about life and death with your kids. It's another for a six-year-old to see a graphically horrible scene uh, of a guy who is bleeding and being tortured out in the front yard and trying to explain to him, no, that's not a real person. And, you know, it, it's like, you know, do I need to take my five-year-old to see horror movies and explain it to him? Or can we just let them be innocent for a little while? And, and let them be natural magicians as, you know, it seems like Satanism is good at, at upholding children in a certain way and their innocence until it's something like this where it's like, well, we have to battle the Christians by saying, yes, this should be allowed. But we don't have to battle anybody. We need to look at it with responsibility and say, there's two sides of this. Number one, it's good work. But number two, it shouldn't be on display for kids. Am I wrong in thinking that way? I mean, well, you're guys, definitely allowed to to think that way. I, I, I just I I think more along the lines of well, this guy uh, may or may not be a Satanist or anything, but uh, he 
as far as the law is concerned, everything in his yard is lawful. He has the right to do that. Um, there's nothing that says Halloween uh, displays have to be cartoonish and happy looking. Um, well, you know, and that, it's, here's where the here's why I have a problem with 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 that idea. If that guy took the exact same craftsmanship and build mannequins, not real people, but mannequins of um, a rapist raping a little child and put those, that would be horrific for Halloween, too. But would that be acceptable? Uh, I, I mean, I think that's a, slow. Yeah, I think well, that's, that's what I'm saying. We're, we're the line the of whole uh, thing indecent is. exposure, even though it's not human, you know, but it's not human. human. It's not you. Exactly. And that's the thing. I mean, you, you could say the same thing about a murder scene that's not real human, but is still graphic violence on a guy's front lawn. I mean, the, that's the problem is that we have these different lines where, uh, you know, as far as I mean, it goes with society. You know, there's certain ones uh, where, like, people are, there's a certain group that doesn't even want Halloween to exist. Then there's ones that are like, um, yeah, we can we can go so far, and there, you keep progressing. And so, like, a whole bunch of us might say, you know, yeah, I think that line is okay. This is where I stand. That he should be allowed to do that. But then a little bit further, and well, that's a different thing, you know. So, I mean, it still comes down to a group. Of people saying this is what's acceptable and this is what's not, and I, you know, obviously I don't want to see child rape art, <laughs> you know. Right. Oh, but yeah. I also don't think, like I said, I don't have a problem with the with the art of this mannequin of this guy being hung upside down or whatever. I just don't think that it should necessarily be out in front yard <laughs> where kids walk by every day. I think I think a lot of it comes down to and sort of taking a step back real quickly the the good thing or maybe the bad thing i don't know about the third side perspective is that there are as many as there are sanus that's true (laughs) yeah yeah as you know as we think of something like this staying within the the confines of what actually happened you know who are halloween decorations for um Part, you know, you can argue, well, I put them up because I enjoy them, but you're putting them up to celebrate something that we all collectively are enjoying at the moment, and that is a, a, a social contracted holiday that we go house to house and right. we live in retarded places that do trunk or treat, and then you should shoot everyone with a rifle. <laughs> not really, not really. Trunk but, or treat. You know, it, you, you, you're doing this because you want to celebrate and have everyone join in. So you have to take the, the collective community pulse if you're an adult with the idea of respect in you, yeah, exactly. then you're going to take the collective communal pulse and say, well, is this okay or is this not? As far as the specifics of that decoration, I have no qualms with it. And even if a, a, a three-year-old came across it, I don't think they would see that and go, that's someone being crucified. They would say, why is that man hanging upside down? Yeah. It is incumbent upon the parents or whomever this child is with Or later in the day, hopefully a a responsible parent to say, that's a decoration. It is because of Halloween. And do the due diligence of explaining what this holiday is about, why people love it. I mean, just my personal, you know, how I roll. My daughter saw Night of the Living Dead at like four years old. And we see it every single year as sort of a ritual. This, if you cannot suspend disbelief, I mean, there are horror movies that I will not allow her to do it, but *Night of the Living Dead*. I think you know, black and white. It's, it's a well, but see that you just kind of made that. You just kind of made that kind of what I'm talking about because I'm not even talking about the idea of the, of the thing being crucified. I'm talking about it being um, bleeding and graphic look, and it looks real. It looks like a real dude. You know, *Night of the Living Dead* in black and white is different, like you just said, than than certain movies that are going to be more graphic and that's that's kind of the thing is where do you draw the line on what's graphic enough for your front yard for kids and and is that really still part of a celebration or is it trying to get under people's skin i mean you know and well and then, but this is something that you're going to run across to in neighbors is you're going to have neighbors you absolutely hate and they will do things just to get a rise. Yeah, yeah. This is this is what it means to live in a society. Sometimes people do things that drive you fucking crazy. And you can find it in social media every single day. Yeah, yeah. People will do things <laughs> just to in. piss you off. You can't control them. If they are in their legal rights and they're not responsible, respectful people, well, then that's, in, you know, that's on them and their parents. Right. And there's nothing you can do about it. Right. But yeah. if you are 
you know, hopefully we are collectively, certainly if we're saying this, I don't think this individual would be, but if we are saying this, then we are using basic human respect for our neighbors as a yardstick. And I say that not because we are, you know, kowtowing to some weird golden rule. It's yeah. just the idea that you wouldn't want to fucking ostracize yourself from your neighbors. Right. I, it's just, it, it's common sense. Why would you want everyone around you to hate you? They can make your life a misery if you do that. That's that's really bad, bad use of lesser magic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and again, let me just go on the record and saying, you know, the the detail in this particular thing, I thought it was cool. I'm an artist. So, you know, first thing I look at is the detail Wait, and wow, it's really cool. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I I think that part of responsibility means that I do oh I have to make sure that I'm not crossing especially as a you know if, if somebody's going to look at me as a satanist then do i really want to be the guy who is the complete asshole to the entire neighborhood who everyone hates is that really representing yeah. i mean granted well, let's be fair supposed we, to be we have our fair share of assholes that's true yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and i think all of us are good at being an asshole once in a while some of us here no. yeah. all of us here Myself included. <laughs> prick, whatever. Asshole, prick. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. I don't know yeah, about no, you, but my prick's a little different you. than my asshole. <laughs> Call me silly. Any verse, <laughs> well, Adam, now, I mean, how many people did not understand or got bent out of shape when you were talking on your show about um, animals recently? I thought it was great. And you actually made me think about something that I never thought about before. As many people who say, you know, animals are just like people. They all have their own different personalities and you need to treat them with respect. And you kind of brought up a point that if they all have different personalities and some of them are assholes. And it was a great point that I actually <laughs> never really thought about. How many people were just totally didn't hear what you were really saying and just got bent out of shape? Yeah, I think the problem comes into play when – Everyone expect you think of a rabbit and you think every rabbit is the same. You think of a dog or a cat and every dog or cat is the same. Maybe you break it down by breed, but other than that, they're all the same. And the truth is, is every single living creature, animal, plant, mineral, whatever, is completely different and aberrant to the other. Yeah. So we have to. I don't understand why Satanists don't get this. It drives me crazy mm -hmm. that we will apply logic to a human animal in one way, but we apply it a completely different way with actual animal animals. Not right. human elevated thinking animals, but base animalistic carnal animals. If we are not going to draw a distinction, then don't fucking draw a distinction and use <laughs> lesser magic equally to both. Uh, right. You every time you approach it. So you know to answer your question, I don't. <laughs> I don't think people who would be offended by what I said tuned into that episode. That's probably and true. People yeah. Expecting to be offended who did tune into that episode, latched on to the idea of survival rather than the idea of treating right. every individual animal differently. Because you are the first person that's actually brought that specific point out. Yeah. Everyone else I've heard of brings out, well, you didn't really say anything about, you know, beating animals. You were talking about survival. And yeah. I think they missed the point or I wasn't clear enough, which is entirely possible or what, but. Yeah. Yeah. And I no, mean, I, I, I think we, I think we all have encountered an, an animal, like, you know, I, you know, a lot of us will, will be animal lovers, but still go, you know, that, that dog doesn't like me for no apparent reason other than, <laughs> so and then you find out, oh, that dog doesn't like anybody, but so-and-so and so he's just a dick you know it just happens <laughs> you know and yeah, yeah you it doesn't mean you had to and kill the thing. Him, but and i know no one likes to hear it but the truth is we are all born with innate capacities some people are just born stupid mindless just visceral thugs and the same goes with animals. Wait, the what? only way that they think or understand is through the, the, the means that they live, and that is violence. Right. So I'm not saying you do it to everyone, but some people will not understand what you're saying until you hit them in the head with a fucking bat. <laughs> some animals will not understand what you're saying until you hit them in the head with a fucking bat. I'm not saying do it. Right. <laughs> saying they exist. Yeah. And we have to be able to accept that and understand that. I mean, in our PC world, we may never be able to say this out loud, but it's the truth. And we have to accept, you know, in the same way that some people are just worker bees. 
They will never be anything but waking up, going to their job, coming home and dying. That is their entire existence. Some people wake up and compose fucking symphonies. Do you think the fucking worker bee understands that or even can rationalize that? It is so <laughs> far beyond their understanding. It's like a fucking alien. The same thing goes for every <laughs> species on the planet. There are different capacities of understanding. And until we collectively as hopefully self-aware atheists or, well, atheists and Satanists, um, until we recognize that, we can't ever move through life as successful magicians because you're supposed to interact with people in the form that they're expecting to be interacted with or else you can't practice lesser magic on them. You have to morph to what they want in order to make them do what you want. Right, this right. is basic. It's not easy. <laughs> it actually takes a fucking lifetime of practice. Yeah. Unless you're Adam Cardone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He said do with that. humans, you do with animals. Same thing. But now we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have an extra warning at the beginning of this show that says uh, the devil you know does not condone Adam Campbell's <laughs> version of animal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It reminds me of a, um, something I read. I can't remember what book it was in. Uh, it might have been Satan Speaks or The Devil's Notebook, but uh, Anton uh, LaVey was saying something about, um, you know, there's people that you have to walk on eggs around, and those very same people, um, you know, to get their attention, you got to beat them in the head, you know, and that's kind of reminded me when you were talking about that. It reminded me of that. I don't remember it verbatim, but it was something like that. No, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. So funny. Uh, you know, I mean, to be fair, I, I've read everything that's been published by Anton LaVey, so I probably stole that from him. <laughs> but that's why we say study, not worship. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. really what it yeah. comes down to. Right. Until you understand these concepts, you have to continually, say, even after you understand them, you have to continually remind yourself, you have to continually study. As human beings, I believe, personally, this is my, my projection here, that it is incumbent upon us to continually grow. We have this incredible thing of self-awareness. We have this incredible thing called a brain that can actually learn from mistakes. So let's fucking do it. You can actually learn from behaviors and learn how to manipulate people and events. Let's do it. If we only have one shot, if this is it, then let's make the fucking best of it and command it. Yeah. Ready, ready break. It. <laughs> fuck yeah dude I, I love when you yell it's funny <laughs> well, Adam let me ask you I mean obviously uh, we need to attribute the uh, idea of the carrying on the greater satanic conversation to you what uh, what inspired that that thought was there was there like some event that made you uh, I guess kind of come up with that phrase and, and that uh, speech yeah 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 yeah, yeah so um, the Greater Satanic Conversation came out of my desperation to figure out a topic to speak to on the 50th <laughs> <laughs> gathering. Just, no, in truth, it, it came out of a reaction not to pseudos, but to Satanists reacting to pseudos um, in, in social media. Yeah. And mm. I, was, I was so bothered by the idea that we would <clears throat> collectively and individually degenerate to um, gossiping and to uh, fear-mongering and to just collectively, at, at, you know, basically bitching yeah. about uh, those who are uh, talking, speaking negatively to what we collectively hold so dear, and that is Satanism. And, he, you know, I, it's not like I started this idea. I mean, Anton LaVey... Right. Codified Satanism. He wrote specifically to this idea yeah. in an essay that um, now a week and a half ago I spoke to that is um, it's now time to kick ass. Like we cannot just sit back and let people talk shit about us. So we have to. It, it is our individual responsibility as Satanists to move forward and battle these assholes on their ground that are redefining who and what we are right and i don't mean for us yeah yeah but yeah. For in the public eye. as a whole yeah it, it's it, it's our fucking <clears throat> job to do so especially you know i i take being in the priesthood of mendez seriously right it, oh, yeah. it was an incredible oh, yeah. and i will not shirk that 
responsibility. So if I hear or see something, then I will speak to it. And that's inside or outside the organization. So, Adam, for some of our listeners, what exactly is a pseudo? <laughs> oh, pseudo Satanist. So someone who believes that they're a Satanist or claims to be a Satanist but misrepresents Satanism or – well, here, here's 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 the reality of it. We made fun of them in episode two, just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are they are Christians who like the idea of Satan and want to identify as it, but they will never change. Like I was speaking to before, some people were born with an innate capacity, innate abilities. Some humans are just born to be sheep, and they will never be able to get beyond that. Some people who are sheep who were introduced to Christianity will never shake that. I don't care. That's them, not me. Yeah. But when they start liking and clinging on to either the fan club of Anton LaVey or the fan club of Satanism, then I have a problem with it because yeah. they are telling the world that they are what I am. And that is not fucking true. Right. It is fundamentally <laughs> a lie. <clears throat> and we should not accept that. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They're booger eaters. <laughs> <laughs> the whole lot of them. Booger eaters. I gotta put another disclaimer in there. The devil you know does not condone booger eating. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I love that it thing. when people like like I start like getting all riled up because I don't I don't really get angry about this stuff, but I like to speak passionately be passionately about it. Exactly. I, but you know, people are just like, Wow, he's really mad. No, I'm not really mad. I just I like to I like to get excited. That's all. <laughs> Oh yeah. Have you ever what's what I conversation have you ever had in your show that got you the most riled up? Like where you your vein was um, popping in your forehead or else? Okay, so there's two sides of that. So when I think of extreme emotion, I think of either like crying or just wanting to kill. Like you know, just I don't right. really feel passion. Like I want to fuck you on the show. So it's either of those two. That's not what so you there's said two last of them night. that come out, <laughs> except for when you guys are on. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but so there, there were there were two distinct episodes. One of them, I spoke to a mother who super, and it, and it's, it sticks in my head because it was so horrendous. It, she super glued her two year old daughter's hands to the wall and kicked her. Oh my god! Kicked her in the fucking ribs until she passed out. Ugh. So that I I had a really hard time getting through it because my daughter was around the age when I did it, um, <clears throat> and I was I was just. I was connecting her in the story yeah. as I was reading it. it. It was really, really hard to get through. Um, the second one was where a father, oh, it was a, a boyfriend that, that was the mother's boyfriend of uh, this mother's uh, kid. He was a paraplegic. And it, the, the trial, I think, like it, the trial is over, but there's a new one to, to convict him, um, where he chopped up and threw away this paraplegic boy, murdered him. Like uh. a fucking horror movie murdered him. And he was found mentally insane. And he went to a hospital because of it. He didn't get killed for murdering a fucking paraplegic boy who had zero chance of anything in life. Yeah. He just got put in a hospital. I don't care how horrible that hospital enough is. It wasn't horrible enough. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to kill that man. You motherfucker. And I wanted to cry for that girl. Those are the types of things in, you know, I have this segment called um, Infernal Informant where I speak to news, news stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just, it riles me up. I can't help it. It, it. it it brings out what I cherish so much and that is the passion of life in me. Mm. And it makes, it, it calls me to action. So whether that action ends up being, you know, ritual or, or masturbating, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> Neither of those is masturbating. I want to be clear, right. but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it drives me crazy. So you know, stuff I, like that. I actually totally, totally relate to that, and I find um, when I hear uh, certain things, especially when it comes to like any kind of child abuse or harming uh, children. Of course, you know, I've got three daughters, and uh, I find myself if if I hear about this, um, I I start reliving in my not reliving I start living in my mind what I would do to the person that harmed my children and I, and I I'm always worried that I'm a look like a psychopath in public because I'm 
walking down the street thinking about this and like, well, motherfucker, You're that crazy person. person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like somebody walking down the, the other side of the street. That guy's be, crazy. Holy shit, stay away from <laughs> Yeah, no. By the way. Uh, That's funny, though. Wait, I got a question real quick. Um, because you were talking about the passion, Adam, that you had, and then you're and you're being drawn to this type of thing, you know, and, and Satanism in general. How how old were you when you you know first had those feelings and those thoughts? Like, how old were you when you first you know were introduced what, to like Satanism? Passionate? No, just like being yeah, Satanism uh, mostly, but realizing that you had these feelings uh, that you wanted to act upon and things like that. So I, I come from a long line of overreactors <laughs> to steal a lot. <laughs> um, my, my mom is the most amazing natural lesser magic witch I've ever met in my life. And just crazy overreact, like passionate about everything. So it started, I think, with her. And as soon as I, I connect, like, I, and I, I've always been, you know, my own version of crazy. Um, but as soon as I connected it as an adult with uh, Satanism, you know, I was a senior in high school, I think. Hmm. So oh, I, okay. we're talking circa 94 ish or something like that. So then did you, uh, did you identify as a Satanist when here we go with identify again, but uh, when you were throughout the, your military career then? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that was well after I had identified and I, I lost a lot of friends because of it. You know, they, they refused to accept that I could be different. Like you know, one thing, especially in like high school time, everyone sort of follows each other. You know, it, it's very hurt. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, depending on the herd you're in, it's still hurt um, behaviors. So if you if you're in a clique and you read something like the Satanic Bible and you find that you don't need that clique anymore, then you are now an outcast. Yeah, you are, you are acting different. Presence. Yeah. Yeah. And so they don't want to be around. And and that's fine. I, I, I didn't need them. I, and I'm used to being sort of outside everything anyway. So it just, it fit. It, it worked. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. And I think you, you understand if you're a Satanist. For me, I understood I was a Satanist because with any other philosophy slash religion, I would have to try to be it. With Satanism, I'm just me. Yeah, I don't have to try to do or be anything. I get to just be who I naturally am, and that is the most liberating idea. It is the most ground-shakingly <laughs> liberating idea that I had ever encountered in my fuck. I was raised in a Mormon household where I was destined for hell and to be separated for all of eternity from the rest of my family. I was expecting a life of outcast from go. But to find something that said, that's cool. Do yeah. your thing. Uh, like, what? It was, it blew my mind. So, yeah, I, I expected it. Everything. It, it's just what I, I can't, I didn't, I, I realized what I was. But it's like, you know, finally looking in the mirror and seeing that <laughs> pimple that's been bugging you. I, it was there all <laughs> along. I just yeah. didn't realize it. Hmm. So then so, uh, okay. let me ask you about uh, going back to military. I mean, not to uh, – uh, I guess what I'm curious about is that um, it seems like military is something that's very – trying to form you to fit to a specific herd um, out of necessity, yeah. of course. But did, well, that, did that cause you any, any problems? That's different because the military, and to be fair, I'm biased. I have great respect for the military. The military trains you to be a soldier. Yeah. Um, the idea of a soldier is, is, is narrow and specific, but that's because you have a specific role to play. Right. Um, you still think and feel and behave and worship however you like. Right. So that, that isn't different. Um, okay. Yeah. I, again, I'm, I was used to being the outcast, so it wasn't such a big deal. My my first day of basic training, they were uh, talking about you know the different events that we were to expect throughout uh, our time in basic training, and um, they said that uh, you know if you want to worship, then you can go worship. If you're not going to worship, then you can stay in the uh, in the bay here and clean it. And um, they're like, you know, does anyone identify as a religion that the chaplain didn't speak to? And 
maybe if I was smart or if I wasn't me, I, I would have left my hand down. But I raised my hand. I said, I'm a Satanist. The chaplain didn't recognize Satanism, but I know that the army does. Um, I don't need anything special, but to answer your question, I'm a Satanist. Uh, I never like to hide. Yeah. And I know that the people closest to me will find out anyway, so I might as well be up front and just, you know, let it let it go where it goes. Yep. Um, totally and, you know, his comment was sort of, you know, tongue in cheek. You need Jesus, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's OK. What it did do that I didn't expect was draw others to me because that's never happened to me before. Yeah. I was always pushed away. But to identify myself as a Satanist and have people drawn to me was really weird. Yeah, um, I mean, really weird. I mean, there were people who, well, uh, there was there was two specific people in the unit I was in, and it spread from there, that would want to just hang out on Sundays and just have me speak to Satanism. The reality is, is I don't like, I I don't like being that person that that oh I will teach you about this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I don't I don't have the pay. Ironically, I was a sergeant in the military and I had four soldiers under me and I had to mentor them, but I don't like it. I hate it. So I didn't want to talk to these people. But of course, as you guys know, law of the forbidden, you don't give them what they want, they want it more. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it became this sort of spiral um, with them. And I ended up giving away a lot of copies. Like I I'd continually call my wife, can you please send another satanic Bible? I got people bugging me and I want them to leave me alone. The only way to get them to leave me alone is to give them the fucking book. Hmm. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I gave out a bunch of books just to get them the fuck off my back. Nice. But you know, that's the power of what we're speaking to. You, you talk about a religion that allows you to be a responsible, respectful, powerful part of your own life and people react to it. Yeah. You know? Nice. So speaking of uh, reacting to it, how did your family react to it? Like, you know, your mother, your father, your siblings, things like that? Uh, they don't accept it. They, they, to this day, they don't accept it. To this day, my, my sisters um, are either indifferent or hold me at arm's length. Uh, my parents are okay. I just don't talk about it with them. Right. They, you know, they're, they're very much in the uh, hierarchy of the Mormon religion in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. So yeah. They, it's, it's so, I, 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 I laugh because they will tell me how the world just doesn't understand them. Uh -huh. They are outside and cast out of society because they, they are Mormons <laughs> and they, no one understands them. And I just look at my mom and smile like, really? You're saying that to me? <laughs> to me. To me. Like, you don't see the fucking irony in what you're doing, right? Like, you're so fucking dumb. Yeah, it drives me nuts. They, they just so don't get it. And are I, you, can't, I can't speak. Are you, like, invited uh, to their home, you know, in holiday times or anything like that? Or are you, like, not allowed to, to come around? I, okay, so it for <laughs> – I had this really awkward moment. It was easy when I was in the military or when I was off to college because I was not in state. Um, when I moved back – because I love this fucking state. But when I moved back, um, my mom had this really awkward, though I respected it, conversation with me where she said, Adam – I, I got to be honest with you. You always say you like honesty. It is too difficult to have you around the family hmm. when we do things collectively. So I'm just not going to invite you. And I said, that's fine with me. And it alleviates me from needing to reject the invitation. Because, you know, it's a, sort of a mutual thing where they don't want me around because they're afraid I might say or behave in a specific way. And I don't want to be around because it's not very fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't like tiptoeing. You know, I don't want to yeah. have a holiday on rice paper. I would rather just be me. And if that means just inviting a bunch of friends over to my house, drinking and watching the Thanksgiving Day parade and then feasting all night... Well, fuck yeah, I choose that over anything else. <laughs> yeah. No, I know how you feel, though. I was the same way with my mother, hardcore Catholic, and it, it was I got the same treatment, you know? So, yeah. And it's okay. I don't care. You know, it's easier for them, so what? everyone acts in their own self-interest. I can't fault them for it. You know, right. I, I can't say that it doesn't bother me a little bit because, obviously, it's my mom, and I want her to love me. I'm, I'm a regular human being. Who yeah, doesn't yeah. want to be loved? Yeah. But you understand that we're all adults and we make our choices. And if their choice is to live it easy, I can't fault him for that. And I'm just trying to do the same thing. 
right, know, yeah. later in life, you know, nowadays they, they, <clears throat> they're much more open and they invite me to things, but I know because of past experience, it's just not worth the hassle and they're reaching out because they feel guilty. I'm just going to reject because it's easier. <laughs> you <Right>. know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, thanks, man. So uh, uh, do you got any like new projects on the horizon? You got anything coming out that you want to talk about or announce to anyone or? Um, no, man, I, I've been, I've been toiling with this <laughs> children's book for a long time that I want to put out, but it's one of those things where every time I go to it, it, it's so emotional that I can't get very far in it. Um, and I've been working on it for now four months, I think. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, a satanic uh, that, coloring book, is it? No. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. no, 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 no. Nice. I, so that's that's on the horizon. It's not it's not really satanic at all. It's it's more just human experience and sort of tragedy in its own way. Okay. But it's just an emotional release. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we all we have to in some way uh, <clears throat> release the demons that are inside of us from from just natural progression of growth. And this is just one of them for me. It's it's taken a little bit, but it's the only thing that I haven't announced that I'm well. I have announced it. But, uh, <laughs> I haven't actually released anything on it. Yeah, I haven't heard you talk about it actually. I don't think so. Interesting. Be, awesome. awesome. Called, I, 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 you know, I interact with social media as if it were you know a one shot, one kill phone conversation. So I put things out there and then I delete them afterward. But it's. Um, <laughs> That's why I don't reply to any of them most of the time. Like, it's just going to be gone anyway. Man. <clears throat> no, I. So this one, this this children's book is called. Uh, oh fuck! I got to look it up now. It's been uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've looked at it. Um, I want you to know that I love you so. So the I, the story is this child who's witnessing his father abuse his mother and him trying to comfort. I uh, see. Even now, I'm going to fucking choke up. God damn it. Uh, him trying to comfort his mom through that experience and at the very uh, fuck you let it damn. out let it out man this so, is good uh, on the other side of it at the very end the sort of the twist is that um you know he is he can't deal with it anymore yeah and in the uh, in the absence his mom says the same thing that he's been saying to her all these, you know, long nights of abuse when the father would finally leave is, you know, I, I want you to know, I love you. So, so it's, it's him trying to take care of his mom. <clears throat> and then the end is mom taking care of him. So it's, wow. as you can see, wow. it's hard to get. It, I so, I mean, you're getting choked up. You're getting a little emotional over it. Does this story have anything to do with the little Adam inside of Adam? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thought, yeah. yeah, I mean, some of my earliest mem- fucking goddamn it. Uh, some of my earliest memories are my my dad like picking my mom up, putting her in the sink and hitting her, and then taking knives and cutting up the furniture. Yeah. Uh, he was alcoholic. He was uh, physically abusive to my mom. He was always yeah. great with the kids, but he was really bad to to her. And and my my last in person memory yeah. of him were the police coming to take him away and him holding me that weird. last time just telling me how much he loved me before he was taken by the cops. So so yeah. I have these vivid memories and and, and connections with the idea of abuse. Um so you know Yeah, I, that, I, I can you know, those, I was talking to trying to get it out. I can relate totally. My father, Hell's Angel, alcoholic drug user, uh coming home beating my mom, beating us. Um I'd always you know, my brother would be in trouble and I'd be like, no, no, it was me. And I would like take the fall for him and get beat. So he doesn't have to. And, uh, yeah, he just, I mean, my father was a fucking maniac. Dude. He shot the car up cause it wouldn't fucking start one day and cops came and he, he put like four cops in the hospital. My, my father's, he was a really, really big guy. And I mean, just all kinds of shit like that abuse and, and cops and but as a that's kid like up. you still loved him you still looked up to him right i i he was superman you know what i mean and he, and he and, yeah. and we we've been estranged for uh, almost 20 years and then about maybe five years ago started talking again and he moved out here to arizona and uh they you know we, we moved him back to connecticut and stuff uh for for health reasons and stuff he had a stroke in like oh five but uh 
yeah, I mean, he's just he's a different guy now, so we can we can have a relationship, you know. But like, you know, my mother, I'm, I'm I, I don't talk to her at all for any reason. She's a fucking insufferable prick. But um, <laughs> she, <laughs> oh, you had to go there. <laughs> no, seriously, she's a fucking she's queen of the fucking assholes, which makes me prince. So whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. I can relate with you, man. Totally. Like, but it's it's important because <clears throat> when when we have these experiences yeah. as Satanists you know, we spoke to it earlier in the show, we recognize them and we learn from them. I, and I would say that the horrendous things that I witnessed and experienced as a kid, they informed me to be a much better father. Right. Like, exactly. Like I, yeah. I, I actively go into life and the disciplining of my children saying, I will not be this man. I, oh my I God, want my kids like to have this <laughs> view crazy. of me, you know? And yeah. so, not yeah. everyone can do that. And so I think it's important that we recognize the importance that we can. And that's fucking – it's really powerful. And it's not just powerful for us. It's powerful for the children that we love. No, it's that something to be commended because it's really hard to break that cycle. My grandfather beat my father. My father beat me. I've never laid a hand on my kids you know, and I, yeah. because I hated them growing up. I, when I was a kid, I would wish them dead. I would like – you know, I'm just being a kid, you know, and I'm just, I'm hating the pain I'm going through or if I'm bleeding or the welts on my back from my mother beating me with a motorcycle chain. Um, you know, I, I would hate them to the point of wishing for their death. And, uh, you know, when you, when you think about yourself having children, you're like, I'm, you know, I grew up like, I'm never going to do this. I never want my children to ever feel this way toward me. So in a way, uh, me going through all of that bad experience like you said, it kind of makes me stay focused and say, well, look, I'm going to break the chain. I'm going to, I'm going to change that. And I'm going to do something different and, 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 and treat my, my children and raise them differently than I was raised. Yeah. It, it's weird. And it's uh, a little depressing and maybe a little self-serving in a way that, but I, I would rather have gone through that than to have my kids go through that. I would rather sure, any yeah. pain I, as a parent, you know, your kid has a cold, you would take that cold. Your kid has a flu, you would take that in a heartbeat yeah. just so that they don't have to deal with that. And it's it's not because you want to shield them from life experience. Yeah. It's because you they are every you create they, they are everything in your life. They you want them to be so much better and so much stronger and have every opportunity that you didn't, and you want them to just be the gods that you fucking created. Exactly. <laughs> and, yes. Yeah. You can't do that unless you fucking, you know, you, you look out for them. But yeah, any heartache, any pain that I have in life, I am okay with it now, of course. It took me a while to get there. I'm yeah. okay with it now because it just made me a better version of me, you know. It, yeah. And and that as a parent, we have to recognize that as too. I mean, that that this should this should diffuse any potential helicopter parents out there because we are a product of our experience of the pains and the fucking boo-boos and the fucking falls. We are the product of those experiences. And if we take that away from our kids, I mean, it's one thing to want to take that away. But if we actively take those away, then you're doing your child a disservice. Yeah. You know, my biggest, <clears throat> I know we're running long. Do we have a little bit of No, time? dude, go no, on. We, as long as you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we do what we want. Right. So <laughs> I, my biggest goal in life, is if I died today, like if I just fucking drop dead, I want my kids to be able to live on their own. If they have to do it, then they could cook their own food, they could wash themselves, they could brush their doggone teeth, wash behind their ears, they could dress themselves, they could go to school, wipe their hineys, and they could yeah. come back without getting hit by a fucking car or breaking a leg or being abducted by someone. If they can do the basics of survival on their own, then I feel like I've succeeded. Now, right. if I can impart a little bit of fucking Adam wisdom in the process, if I can imprint a little bit, okay, but I realize they're their own creatures and they're going to be who they want to be. Right. I'm going to try, but they're going to be who they want to be, and I accept that. But so the other day I was walking my daughter to school. She's six, very young. Walking her to school, and you know she, she takes her own baths, she <clears> brushes <throat> her own teeth, she fixes her own snack after she gets home from school. I mean, she's very, we've done a really good job with her. I asked her, I was like, if I was abducted by aliens, because I want to talk about death, but if I was abducted by aliens tomorrow, um, 
do you think you'd be okay? Do you think you could, you know, get through your day on, on a normal basis? I mean, you'd hopefully miss me, but other than that, she's like, yeah, I got it. And I was just like, I fucking success. You can like, go now, I, dad. I it's it. cool. I fucking did it. Yeah. And, and it just makes me feel so good. Like we, our job is to put them in a position of being able to command their own lives. At six, my daughter's got it. Like, God damn it. I did fucking something right. You know, it just makes you feel good. That's yeah, cool. absolutely. So, yeah, I don't want to like just jump off on a tangent here, but we are running long. But uh, I, there's something that we do ask of each of our guests. Um, maybe we can hit on really quick. Uh, what does Satan mean to you? Mm, yeah, Satan. Um, <laughs> I've heard of this guy before. Um, I hear he takes people's souls. Right? <laughs> um, no. It, it's like asking me, what what do I mean to myself? I don't think of uh, Satanism or the idea of Satanism in a term that is separate from myself. Uh, I think of it collectively as a large part of who and what I am. I wouldn't do what I do if that weren't the case. Um, I, I am a Satanist. I am my own Satan. So you ask me what it means, it means me. It means I am a devoted father, a loving, a doting husband, uh, an aggressive adversary, and an all-around prick. It means that <laughs> I am a hard fucking worker who learns from his mistakes and excels at every fucking thing I do. Because I do learn from my mistakes, and I look to the future, to what I want, and I plan in order to get it. You know, I got to say, we, this is our third episode, and that was the second most interesting uh, answer we've got on that. <laughs> second? Motherfucker! Well, Kevin Slaughter's answer was just, I mean, come on, come on. Come on. Hey, yeah. can't fault it. <laughs> no, well, we, really, say, we, we asked uh, that because it's, a, it's really interesting to hear different people's uh, take on that. And, you know, yeah. and it's really nice to actually, I mean, I hate to say this because I don't want to set other people up for it, but... I mean, it's really nice to not hear the the, the cookie cutter pre prescribed answer to that question. Yeah. You know, what would that be, by the way? I guess you'll have to. Listen. I wouldn't know. That's, that's, <laughs> <Okay. yeah. laughs> nice try, though. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to say too. We're uh, asking the fucking questions but. before uh, before we go. <laughs> um, I'd like to just kind of add in here that uh, um, number one that. Um, John and I are both fans of Nine Cents, your show. Yeah, um, listen every every week, and of course, you know, <laughs> uh, one of our regulars on our show, Pat the Smoker, is was uh, had to be on the show from hearing the commercials on your show <laughs> that, from my Satanist. So, yeah. um, but um, <laughs> one of the things that, and I, I know I, I said this to you before, and it, it, I think it ended up on the cutting room floor of Nine Cents. So I'm going to put it here out in public is that so I can um, put it on the cutting room floor. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I, I really like about your show is that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that that do uh, some really good podcasts and stuff. But so many of them are, are very um, scripted or very stiff and, and you are, are very natural. Your personality is really just perfect for what you do. And it's one of the reasons why I really like your show and why, you know, we wanted to have a show that's kind of more just free form like this kind of just have yeah. Yeah. And, and, and let you kind of do your thing. So we really appreciate uh, you being a part of this. Thanks, man. Yep. You know, I, I, I do what I do um, so that I can hear stuff like that and then play it back and masturbate. <laughs> and now you'll be able to over and over and over. Uh, Stand again, Dorian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, this is what I do. Then you can give yourself two orgasms. orgasms. It's great. If, if you so have a if you have a picture of me hanging up with lipstick and something on, then I'm gonna be really <laughs> creeped out. But. How the fuck did you know that? <laughs> that's not even funny. No, seriously. Who? <laughs> They're there now. Right. Right. Shauna told us everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny because like like when we met collectively, each of us, uh, we met in person, the same place. Uh, yeah, for the first time, it, it's weird because you, you, the collective, the the pejorative, you as an individual, if, if you're a Satanist, you should be able to get the tone of a person the second you see them. Yeah, from 
handshake. You get who this person is. Um, and there was a lot of hands that I shook. That, yeah. Maybe not a lot. There was a handful of hands. That's weird. A handful of hands that I shook. A couple cocks that I shook. That <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, that's a. This is not someone that I would have a drink with." Yeah. That I would <laughs> very much. Um, and and I, it's important to recognize because we as Satanists we do not all get along. Not because we can not get along, but because we're individuals, <clears throat> and sometimes you mm-hmm. just rub each other the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, I can honestly say along with a, a number of other individuals that I met that, that weekend, you two, I, you know, solid, just solid human beings, fantastic Satanists. You did your good job of uh, fooling me. I, I dig you, like genuinely. <laughs> the first second, I didn't even know 100% who you were, Dorian. The first second I saw you, I was like, if I was gay, I would fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it. Like, I don't know if you remember. Well, and you and I actually, we had, we had talked a couple of years before that. Um, uh, on, on your show, I actually I said was that about your show, wife, Jim, I but I said. totally hid space. But yeah, I, I think it, we kind of were like the same way. Like we kind of shook hands right away, and we're like, "Yeah, we could totally riff and and have you know be cool with each other." And I and I know John and I both have felt the same way that there were certain people that you know I walked up, like I remember walking up to one individual and going, "Oh, I'll be, I'll be nice to this guy and shake his hand." And and as soon as I did, he was just kind of like, eh, you know, like this one individual. I'm like, oh, "This guy's a dick." Oh, I know who you're talking about. You did and, the same thing to me. Yeah. And there's there's several people like that, but for the most part, yeah, I mean, like, if you can be cool to somebody, then he's so no full of himself. That's all. And some of us really just clicked, and I and uh, I definitely, I definitely know that all of us here clicked. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's important to recognize too, because you know there there was one other person I, I kind of want to call out, and I hope it's okay that I really, really like I I didn't know anything of. I had spoken briefly to them online before, like briefly, um, but like Matt Sanji. I hope it's okay. I said his name. Oh yeah, um, dude. Yeah. Or even if I said it right, like coolest dude on the fucking planet. Yeah, he yeah. came like, out. I, he came I, out to Hollywood. Him, when I was getting my tattoo from Dorian, he came out there and seen us. Dude, he's a, he's awesome. Yeah, cool yeah, guy. He's just a good fucking person. Like meeting Satanists that are like that is fucking odd. There's there's a dude in Canada too. Uh, I don't want to say his real name, um, but his pseudonym. Um, he it's Hail Satan backwards. I don't want to say. Oh yeah, but yeah. Oh yeah, fucking, yeah. Yeah, he's he's a straight up cool fucking guy. He, the thing in in it. I don't like pretension. I hate people that bloviate their own fucking sense of self worth. <laughs> Outside of the idea that it's a sin in Satanism, just as human beings, I hate it so much. And it's not because I'm trying to be modest about who and what I do or who and what I am. It's that I see what they are and I recognize how fucking fake it is. Right. And I just cannot stand seeing something that I am so goddamn it is, as a part of who and what I am. That they identify with the same thing, Satanism, and they're fucking in the same thing. You know, they're they're a part of it, and it drives me <laughs> mad. I know. And the worst thing is they know it. They, they fucking know it. Like they see it. They look in the mirror, and they see every day. I am not a hundred percent this, but I'm gonna fucking claim it because it gets me that many more people. Ah, oh, it drives me mad. <laughs> uh, oh, I fucking love it. That's funny. <laughs> 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 oh man no that's good this was so much fun thanks guys I really but, you know what it. I gotta be honest usually I'm like editing things and things like, I don't I'm not editing shit I'm giving it to them as it comes <laughs> here it is because there's nothing you know this is awesome went off went out a hitch yeah so uh this has been this has been a really awesome uh time adam really appreciate you having you on and and uh, i think you know not only having uh fun and goofing around with us but also you know kind of open up yourself a little bit and we uh, we appreciate that and uh, absolutely i think uh you know hearing your story and hearing some things about uh your life and and i, I identify with you you know that much more knowing that uh mm. you kind of went through uh some of the things that i did too so it's uh i appreciate that that's really good it's been an honor. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah. You're quite welcome. All right. So, <laughs> so take care, man. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hello, everyone. My name is Penelope, and I will be filling in for Pat the Smoker this week since she has had an emergency. 
and she has been rushed to the hospital. She's all right. She is just recovering. So good thoughts out to her. We all love her. She'll be back soon. Um, But for this week, I, Penelope, have an exercise for all of you to try. Now, for this exercise, I need you to actually go through with it. You, You need to follow it with me. Otherwise, you will not get the true experience and it'll just be a waste of your time. So, so go through with it. Um, and I think you will really enjoy it, especially if you have stress, anxiety, r- any kind of thing going on in your life right now. All uh, right, well, let's get started. So, first, what I need you to do is close your eyes. Just very ever so slightly, just some deep breathing. All right, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out, and while your eyes are closed, what I need you to do is imagine just a circle, and now that circle, all it does is change colour, it starts out a deep blue, slowly changing into a purple and while it's purple you see a little tiny unicorn coming from the right side going towards the little purple dot and it moves around it kind of galloping trotting around and then all of a sudden it stomps on the dot smashing it into the ground and The unicorn sees you and is looking right at you with big, beautiful blue eyes. And now he's running towards you. And now he's galloping towards you, coming straight at you, pointing his horn right in your face. And then it goes through your skull, piercing you. And you deserve it because you listen to this bullshit. Don't listen to anyone else but yourself and be your own god thank you so i think that'll wrap up the show for today yeah good episode three right on yeah had a great time uh you know and talking to christopher walken again (laughs) oh my god yeah uh (laughs) it's a project you know it's a project i mean you know he's got a He's got to focus on the right books, but uh, yeah, you know, yeah. It, it it's kind of a fun, uh, I guess, exercise for us, though. So, yeah, normally I, I wouldn't help anyone. If, but, if it was uh, anyone else, <laughs> yeah, you know. But, but it's Chris, it's Chris, you know? man. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Just feel a little more obligated to. Uh... <laughs> Get him in line with yeah. that. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of. If he could just keep the, I'm afraid huh? if we don't, that you know, he's so public, he could really make our our, our job hard <laughs> for us. So we got to shut yeah. him up. He's just got to, when he puts down the book, pick that same book back up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. He keeps reaching for another one. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. But great, great. Uh, and Adam, Adam. Oh man, Adam was I had great. great time. And you know, I I kind of feel like. Uh, our show went from uh, Howard Stern to Barbara Walters for a minute there. It kind of yeah, right. <laughs> we kind of uh, ran the gamut of goofy to uh, getting choked up and uh, some good yep. conversation all around. I know. I almost wanted to give a prize out to everyone in the studio audience. You know, it was crazy. <laughs> uh, shit, yeah. <laughs> all right. So I will, uh, or we will see you guys next week. We will hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan.